what is even the point? To learn how to code when AI is just gonna take over my job. I'm spending all this time. See this laptop, it's going out the window. And what is the point? Okay, before we really dive into how to use these AI tools to help us with programming, we first need to know about the history, understand the history of AI and why it became all of a sudden so popular today. 2022 was a massive year for AI. There are so many AIs that was released, it really caught on and we started to see the rise of AI, if you will. So many new apps came out, so many new waves came out around what was possible with AI. And it became, most importantly, more accepted and embraced by the public. The first quarter of 2022 saw incredible advancements that started to come out to the public with AI, especially in terms of image and text-to-image generators. Think of Mid Journey, think of Dolly 2. These were all products that the public was able to finally play around with and get really excited about. They allowed for people to quickly generate unique and high quality content that could be used for different purposes. This is one of the first times that AI really started to get hype from the general public. Now there has been cases in the past where this has happened, but not to this degree. People were really starting to catch on to AI and it being able to generate art. In November of 2022 is when things really started to open up. We saw OpenAI release ChatGPT and things immediately started to change. ChatGPT, an advanced conversational generator that answered questions with human-like responses, really human-like responses. The product immediately gained so much popularity and actually within five days of the release of ChatGPT, it gained one million users. I'll put up on screen here a graph because I think it took Instagram, I'm gonna quote it wrong, I think it was six months or so, I'll put a graph on screen. But you can see just how quickly AI, this ChatGPT AI has been catching on. People are gravitating towards it. Think of AI as a tool to help you. So there are so many other tools that you use in your day to day when you are coding. Think of AI more so as a tool that will help or assist you. So we use tons of different tools in our everyday coding already. And this is just an additional one. It doesn't have to be looked at as the sense of this is the tool that's going to take over my job just because it knows how to code a bit. I mean, even before we had ChatGPT, there was, what is that popular one? I'm blanking now. Give me a sec. GitHub Copilot, of course. We had GitHub Copilot, and this has been around or used anyways by the public more frequently or longer than ChatGPT. And then for some reason, because ChatGPT got into all this hype, the fear that came along with it was real, or it felt real anyways. But rather than looking at it as something that's going to take over your job, start looking at it as a tool similar to Google, similar to Stack Overflow. These are all tools that we use or resources we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And now with AI, it's providing us some more tools, some more in-depth tools. Also on the note of AI being such a widely used tool, I wanna to share with you some other tools that you can use that maybe will help you in other areas in your coding career. And I'll list them down here. Okay, in this video, we are talking a lot about ChatGPT, of course, because it's mainly the one that's been hyped up for so many of us. And honestly, I actually really like using it. It's very, I know the data hasn't been updated since 2021, but otherwise it's still extremely valuable and helpful. And I've really found it helpful in my career thus far. This brings us to the question though, what programming languages should we focus in on to use these tools most effectively? The first programming language I'd probably focus on is Python. And also too, I'm walking through Central Park during this video and let's check out this view. The reason I'd focus on Python is because it's so versatile. There are so many areas that you can use it. There are so many things you can do with it. And it's one of those things that if you are just starting out in your coding career and you don't necessarily know what route you wanna take, do you wanna be a front-end developer, back-end developer, data scientist, there are so many different roles that starting with a programming language that is as flexible and widely used as Python is a great way to go. Also too, I've been doing a lot with ChatGPT and Python and I feel like it really likes Python and knows Python, so it's a great programming language to start learning with the help of AI. Another programming language that I would really suggest if you are just starting out in your coding career or coding journey is to pick up JavaScript. This is the first language that I picked up and I would still really recommend it today, mainly because once again, similar to Python, it's very flexible and can be used for a lot of different things. So whether you are building on the front end side of things or maybe you're building on the back end, it is one of those things that you can start your coding journey without having to fully commit as to what role you want. And another thing on that note is you can progress in your career. Maybe you start out in one area with this language and you can 
grow into a different role that uses it for other things. There's, it's multi-purpose, I guess you could say. So at this point, Python, JavaScript, maybe it's another language I didn't list here. I would focus on though taking a tutorial, going the old-fashioned way, if you will, versus learning directly with ChatGPT. At this point, instead of just focusing on ChatGPT for your beginning of learning, I would focus on taking a tutorial. Now, this is where ChatGPT, though, can come in handy still, around asking you questions about the fundamentals and understanding if there's you're taking a tutorial and there's an area that you still don't really understand, you can ask it to explain it to you. Let me show you. And on that note, when you are starting out and wanting it to explain things to you, it can be kind of generic. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so in ChatGPT now, once again, I'm so lucky I got in because I feel like it's always at capacity. I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna upgrade, I think. I'm gonna pay. All right, let's start. Explain to me, like an engineer, I think that's really important too, to put how you want it explained. So do you want to explain like a kindergarten teacher? Do you want it explained like a chef? How do you want to explain? Um, oh, my crisp microphone. Okay, explain to me like an engineer, what the benefits of using Python are. Let's just start with something really simple. Okay, you can see it gave pretty high level of why Python is so in demand and why you should learn it. But it's really good to start with understanding that. Why is, that's one thing I really missed when I, I didn't do until later in my career, which came to bite me, is I didn't understand why I was doing the things I was doing. Meaning, why was I learning JavaScript? Like, why not Python? Why not Java? I just was like, this is what's put in front of me. This is what I'm gonna learn. Versus actually taking time to understand what it is used for, the thought behind it, why use, for example, React over Angular or Vue over React or whatever the case is, the whys behind things. Instead, I just started building. And that's not a bad thing, but at some point in your journey, you will have to answer those questions, those whys, because that will differentiate you from a great engineer to an okay engineer. All right, let's get a little bit more technical here. Let's ask it, um, give me an example of how to of a Python script and explain to me what it does. So let's start getting into some examples. Like we're starting with the basics. You are just learning, you are using ChatGPT to learn. Let's see, all right, so it's writing a script for us. While it's generating, let me have my coffee again. <laughs> Okay, so what it did was generate a script or import Pandas library, which is extremely popular. Uh, and it's actually a really great thing though, if you are learning Python, for example, or JavaScript, or whatever the case is you are learning. I'm just using Python in this example because um, we've been doing a lot with Python lately. And Pandas is a library that is extremely popular for data manipulation and in a data manipulation library in Python. And it explains to us what is going on throughout this code. So what is the benefit here? Well, if you were taking a tutorial, I know I, I'll list some tutorials here, boop, 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 or whatever the noise is. I don't know if I should use that sound effect or not, but here are some good tutorials to take. And then as you're going through, one of the biggest things that I really struggled with was the instructor maybe didn't fully explain something or I was kind of like a little lost and then I'd ask the question, say I was taking a Udemy course, I would ask the question in the chat and it would take days for that person to respond. And I paid money for this, do you know what I mean? Whereas this is, if you're taking a course, whether it be one of the courses I shared with you or, or not, you can actually just ask it to explain to you what exactly it is or start from, start from the basics. Another way is to get it to quiz you, actually get it to create a quiz for you or create questions for you that might be asked in an interview setting. And you can create quizzes that are technical, soft skill related, however you want to. So I just have on screen here an example, literally just typed in, quiz me some Python interview questions. And what it generated is a list of 10 questions. Now listen, maybe some of these questions aren't common in interviews, for example, an interviewer might not ask you the generic question, what is Python? But these are questions that will really help you prepare for an interview. You should be able to explain what is Python in a few simple sentences. Uh, you should be able to explain these things. How do you write a unit test in Python? How do you open and read a file in Python? The interviewer may or may not get this specific, but these are good challenges for you to go along as you are learning to be able to understand your level of knowledge. Are you able to do this? And it really also helps you feel more confident as well when you are going into the interview. This is a great way, I think one of the best ways actually, to really start practicing for interviews when you, as you are learning. So you can start literally from day one or two and, and questions that really entice you or interest you. Like, wait, I really wanna dive into that. How do I write a unit test in Python? 
And there you go. If you're confused as to where to even start with your learnings, this is actually a great way to go as well, starting with interview questions and narrowing down on what interests you or inspires you the most. You can also use it to help you debug and explain code. This is great as you progress in your learnings that when you're coding on your own, you might not understand something or maybe you're still in the tutorial portion of it and you need it explained in a different way. Also tip, actually, let me show you. And this can be code that you are getting explained to you from your tutorial, maybe you're onboarding at a new company, or in this example, I have free code camp up on the screen here. And I literally just did, I searched up uh, samples of Python code. And this is a really, actually, this is a, I'll link this free code camp down below, because let me scroll up without making you dizzy here. It is a very long article. It's a really helpful article because it does go through what they will cover for different uh, topics in Python. So if I go to, let's go to recursion, because that's so hard to explain, especially or grasp when you're first learning. So it does do, they have in their own blog a little article or a little summary of what exactly recursion in Python is. But if you are having some trouble still understanding it, let's, let's go, let's do this with a Fibonacci function. Copy it, and go in here and then go explain to me. And then once again, this is key, explain to me as an engineer as a kindergartner, however you want. So I'm gonna say, explain to me in very simple terms what this code does. Because you can ex say, explain to me what this code does, and you will get a response, but the more specific you are, the better result you will get. Let's see what it says. I'm gonna be so, I'm gonna be up all day, like all night from all this coffee I'm drinking today, I'm telling you. See here, this cone defines a function called Fibonacci and takes an input of n. The function calculates the nth number. Okay, I'm not gonna read this whole, whole thing to you. I'm gonna put you to sleep here. You can pause this if you wanna read it more, but it is really breaking it down. And it's one of those things that if you don't understand a specific part of the explanation, you can even copy it and say, explain this to me further. And it's just so powerful. I'm kind of, I, I'm really mind blown. I know I shouldn't be because I work in tech, but moving fast. But I wouldn't be doing this video justice if I didn't really explain to you what not to use ChatGPT for because that is almost more important than what to use it for when learning. Also, look at this view. You might be saying, well, Tiff, why not? This seems perfectly fine. This is what it's there for. And while I kind of agree with you to certain points, you have to be aware, especially when you are learning to code, that you need to know what is going on with the code. If you were literally just telling ChatGPT or any AI service to just code for you, A, it's not going to scale that well, if at all, actually. B, you're not going to know what it's doing. And in turn, you're going to spend so much time debugging and working through errors that you're gonna spend your time on that, which is a good way to learn as well, versus actually learning though the fundamentals. ChatGPT is a great tool to help assist you. And as you grow in your programming career, maybe there will be times where you, you will use it or tools like it to write different functions for you or build more code for you. But at that point, when you are doing that, you will already understand as to the purpose behind it. When you are first starting out learning to code, do not use these tools to code for you. In turn, yes, you might get more coding done faster or build projects faster, but you won't really know what is going on behind the scenes. And that can get very difficult then when you go for interviews, you are explaining code and genuinely want to grow your skills. You need that foundation. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little tour of New York while I embarrass myself filming in public for you because I love you all so much. And I hope this was really valuable as far as how I would learn to code again in today's environment with the use of ChatGPT or other AI tools. And if you are someone who is learning to code, leave down below what programming language you are learning. And I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.